Hey, it's Larry Lercy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about making black and white images in Photoshop using adjustment layers. Now, the great thing about Photoshop, and also the terrible thing about Photoshop, is that you can do things a million different ways. And so we're going to show you a way that's fairly simple but gives you a lot of flexibility afterwards. Before we get going, please take a second to subscribe to the channel and help me reach my goal of 1 billion subscribers. Too much? 500 million, 1 million subscribers. Also at the end, I'll show you a way that we can use this black and white technique when we're doing compositing. Sound good? Let's go. What we're going to try to do here is show you a technique that's pretty versatile and gives you a lot of control but isn't too difficult. You know, certainly a very easy way of doing this task of making this image black and white is we could always just go up to Image, Adjust, Desaturate, and that gives us a basic black and white. And if you're not too worried about controlling it and you're just in a super hurry, you can do that. The problem here is we have lost all this information. It's a destructive method. The color is all gone. So if we go back later and decide after we've done a whole bunch of other things to it, we say, you know what, I think instead of black and white, I want it to be color. All that information is gone. You can't bring that color back uh, very easily. So we try not to use destructive methods when we do things in Photoshop, if we can avoid it. So let's go back here to the original, and I'm going to show you a non-destructive way of doing it. And we're going to do it right here. The little circle with the line through it for adjustment layers, click that, and we're going to choose black and white. So now we can see it has already gone ahead and converted this to black and white for us, much like um, desaturate. It's just done kind of a basic black and white and from here we can kind of sculpt it to whatever we want. Now one easy way is trying the presets, which are always hit or miss, but you can go through and try different ones. This would be a blue filter, that's too much. You can try the lighter, red filter, neutral density, these are blowing out the skin tones really badly, but um, sometimes they work, it just depends on the image. So you can try the presets, what I like to do generally is start on this default and just go through and dial in exactly what I want. Now what these are doing is they're only affecting the areas that are this color. So for example, the blues. I'm going to click this little eye so we can see the color again. You can see there's not much blue in this image. There's a little bit of blue back here in the background, but not a lot of blue. So the blue slider is not going to do very much. It's affecting those windows in the back, but that's about it. You can decide if you want them bright or dark. We'll leave them somewhere there in the middle. Um, this magenta, you can see it's only affecting the lips because that's close to the color of her lipstick. So you can decide, do you like the lips lighter or darker? We'll dial them in how we want. The red and the yellow with skin tones are gonna be some of the ones that give you the most effect. And you can see here, you can go a lot of different ways. We can go really dark, really bright, but you just kind of dial in until you get the look of the black and white that you're wanting, and it's going to always, it's not like a, you can just write down these numbers and it'll work for your image. It's always going to be different, but you're going to kind of use these to dial in exactly what you want. If you can't decide, if you're not really sure, you say, well, I don't know what color it is right here, but I want to affect these tones. You can just go ahead and click the little hand, and then we click and drag, and it's just working on that area. So again, if we do that here in the lip area, it will move things up and down, but basically it's based on where we're clicking. And so generally with a combination of those, you can dial it into whatever it is you like as far as style. The beauty of this, of course, is twofold. One, we've got total control over how we tweak this black and white image, and more importantly, we have not lost that information. The color file is still just sitting here on its own layer underneath. But the, by having this on its own layer, one, we can go in and tweak all those things like we just did. Secondly, we've got the option of using a mask to take away the effect in certain areas. And then we've got up here, you know, it's a layer. We can adjust the opacity and dial back the effect and let a little of the color through. So many options going this route. So that's how you would use it with a portrait. Let's take a look at another image. 
So here we have just your basic travel shot. So what we're going to do, same technique, we're going to go down, click on the circle, choose black and white. And again, I would probably start by checking out some of these filters. And they're going to give you very different looks. You know, the high contrast red uh, looks really cool sometimes. There's your neutral density, kind of blows out the sky. Depends on the look that you're going for. You know, sometimes even the infrared does a, a cool job. It kind of makes it a little too blocked up down here. But again, I find that going with the default and then dialing in exactly what I want, and sometimes you don't even need to know what color all these things are. You just start with the red and you wait till you think the image looks better. I like that. Start with the yellow. Okay. And just go through each one until you think the image looks better. You know, this is really affecting our sky. Do we want the dark sky, blown out sky? We'll go somewhere in like that. Same with the blues. Bring a little of that detail back. That's only affecting a few little things. And then we've got it how we like it. And and there you go. You've got it set up. You decide you don't want that effect. Turn it off. You're back to color. One of the nice things about this is you can even come back later and click right back here. And then we can go in and we can make changes. So we're not locked into how we dialed in all these settings before, we can go back and change them later. But it really is nice to have this layer control where you can go back later and change things, but still have that color sitting there underneath so you haven't lost anything. Another cool thing you can do with this is this tint feature up here, where once you've dialed in the black and white exactly how you like it, you click the tint and it's gonna, whatever color here, it's basically gonna put that on top in this case giving us this uh, almost sepia tone look. But you can go in, change that to like a blue for example, and just give a little bit of a hint of blue and it gives us this really cool black and white tone. If you decide you don't like that, you can you know warm it up, go for some, some of these tones, and just put a little bit of this warming in there and just dial it up to exactly what you think looks good maybe something like that so it's just almost again in a sepia warm tone but the the tent really is a nice way to go back and do things again non-destructively because we can go back later and we decide you know what I don't like this I want just the regular black and white I just turn that off and I'm back to regular black and white so you've got a lot of options here which really is cool now one of the issues that you will run into if you're doing compositing and if you've got multiple layers like we have here in this situation where we've got the image of her on top just to kind of see what the two different layers look like. If we want her image to be black and white but the underlying image to still be color, the problem is this adjustment layer is affecting everything below it. However, if we come over here and click this little box, that will actually make it where it only affects that layer below it. It's basically doing a clipping mask. If you don't know what a clipping mask click on up there for a link to a video on how those work. But basically it will turn it into a clipping mask so it only affects the layer right below it and not that bottom layer. So definitely that should help you if you're doing compositing. Anyways, I hope that helped. If it did, please take a second to like the video. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.